Times? You want proof? Twitter? You want proof? Facebook? You want proof, you corrupt, lying, whatever you are? Here's the proof. I didn't write it. Russians didn't write it. And I didn't get the 30 million. Your prince got it. The prince of darkness. Joe Biden. The guy who used his son, a drug addict, to be his bag man. And you want to be president of our country? My goodness, you should check in to the local federal prison and start doing your time. That's where you belong, not in the White House. You used your family to pick up your bribes, hide your bribes, live the life of a billionaire. And by the way, I don't think you failed in all those negotiations just because you're stupid. I think you failed in those negotiations because you sold out the United States of America. That's what I think you did. And you were ready to do it again if we didn't catch you. Rudy Giuliani was on fire. Wow. We will hear from General Flynn today and his family talks with Chris at Mac Files. Sidney Powell drops another lawsuit in Michigan. Georgians making a stand and so much more. Breath of fresh air. Speaking of air, you would think the air quality inside your home is safer than outside, but studies show it's actually the opposite. Indoor air pollution can be two to five times higher indoors than outdoors. This is why I got the amazing clean air device. This amazing device is air purifier and air ionizer that purifies my home's air by scrubbing and repelling specific viruses and bacteria from the air. Invest in your health and get amazing clean air today. Go in that description box below. Click on amazingcleanair.com today. I want to make sure we play this point. By my count, you've got over 700,000 ballots that the state said they did not mail out that was returned with a vote. 700,000, we cannot brush all alone. How is the entire election not thrown out with just that number alone in Pennsylvania? Thank you, and we have a precedent. 1994, there was a state Senate race, uh, Marx versus Stinson, and uh, it, it was a safe Democrat seat, but they couldn't help themselves, and there was so much cheating that a federal district judge threw out the results, threw out the Democrat that won that election, and put the, the Republican who lost because it was compromised. So if the Trump administration can make the case that it's that bad, if not worse, in areas of the state, you're going to see things flip. Yeah. We're going to see things flip. That Senator Mastriano, uh, just loving the stuff that he's doing and the stance that he's making for our country, taking back uh, America, making sure that things go according to how they're supposed to go for our country. It's amazing, too, that we have uh, what was posted on the Department of State dash board but had since been deleted and this was uh, what senator doug mastriano put out and he shows that the pennsylvania official votes uh for president trump uh 11 24 at 8 p.m p.m the election had 2,821 on the election 594,000 mail-in ballots and provisional 49,000 biden had 1,400,000 election mail-in ballots 1,900,000 mail in and provisional 52,000. So Pennsylvania reports having mailed out all of those ballots. They mailed out 1,823,000 of which 1,462,000 were returned. Yet the total mail in votes number was 2,589,000. Where's the rest of those 70,000 uh, votes come from? It's amazing how this is all playing out let me scroll down just a little bit we had kyle becker had pennsylvania ba gop lawmakers were introduced a resolution that declares election results as in dispute delays the certification of votes and asks for the u.s congress to also declare the 2020 presidential race to be in dispute and so that's harrisburg right there kdka TV news staff, Pennsylvania Republican lawmakers have introduced a resolution intending to dispute the 2020 election results, and that's a result of the senator there, Mastriano. The resolution intends to declare the 2020 election results as being in dispute, delay the certification of votes from Pennsylvania for both the state and presidential races, and the asks for the Congress to declare the 2020 race to be in dispute. So it was sponsored by the following. It's got a list of names. 
there. It's not yet been voted in either the State House or the Senate, but uh, word is that they're going to not uh, do what they're told, obviously. They're going to have to probably take it to the Supreme Court. We'll see. So Lynn Wood said now there's 27,000 signatures on fight back petition to Brian Kemp from Georgia to order special session of Georgia legislature to investigate the election fraud. He says they need 100,000 plus signatures before delivery. We need Georgia voters, but Georgia impacts nation, so all voters feel free to sign. I put the link for that in the description box below if you want to click on stopgeorgiafraud.com. And then also Karen Cornett said that Sidney Powell is asking for prayer, calling all prayer warriors. She is surrounded by evil. And I'm getting some reports from close friends that uh, know a lot that is going on. And what we're hearing is they have never sensed this much evil before um, in the work that they're doing to support the president and helping Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, and more. It has sensed definitely spiritual warfare at the highest peak. So also in California, you would uh, you could see that somebody put out that uh, the Trump um, tonight, Orange County, California, again, told Gavin Newsom what we think of his draconian unconstitutional curfew. We had at a minimum 18 rallies statewide. We demand an audit of California votes. Biden cheated. And so Sidney Powell put this, she said, and you should demand a full audit of California. Lots of voter and election fraud in California. More to Come. And we're going to hear from General Flynn here in a moment. He's going to talk about the many things that are coming in from all kinds of states. Thousands of po- people step into the plate, even wanted to show their faces and say, saying, put me in there. I want to show what's going on in my state. So it's amazing, right, how this is all playing out, because if this did not happen, if uh, if they just played it out, got rid of the machines, didn't let these guys uh, try to cheat like they've been doing for who knows how many years, decades, we would never be able to fix this system. Wouldn't it great that the system's going to be fixed? And then we'll see in 2022, 2024, we'll see a real election with real numbers coming in when they get this all cleaned up. Up. And that's the hope and that's our prayer. So Kevin McAuliffe said, good morning. Pennsylvania certification halt upheld. Arizona legislative hearing schedule. That's supposed to be Monday. We got uh, Wisconsin, the petition on 150,000 ballots are going forward. New- Nevada's evidentiary hearing scheduled. Georgia, two cases, 11th Circuit grants the expedited review, thanks to Lynn Wood. And Michigan has 100 exhibits of evidence in Powell's case. That's right, 100. We're going to discuss a few of those in a moment. So the updated Biden cheated. And Trump Army in January 2016 to the top right, you got the 300. Trump Army today, whoo, millions, millions. They're saying 80 million. Folks, I'm starting to think even more. I had some folks put in the comments below that I was off, that it's probably one Biden vote for every 1,000 uh, Trump votes. I'm starting to agree with that even more. Who knows if uh, Biden even got a million votes based on the numbers we're starting to see. The cheating had to be done because they knew they couldn't make it. So it's interesting also that Sidney Powell unleashed the Michigan lawsuit against Whitmer, Secretary of State Benson. This is from uh, World Information 24.info. The 75-page document detailing the allegations in Michigan was uh, can be read there, and I put that in the description box below. It's directed at Governor Whitmer, that's right, and Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. We're hoping that the Wicked Witch of the North is taken down. Powell's calling for the election results to be decertified and wants voting machines impounded. I wonder why. Well, in Venezuela, we had this in March 2020, 50,000 of voting machines were burned. That's this year in March. And so in that article says, why does it matter? Because recent elections in Venezuela have been beset by allegations of fraud. The company that provided the voting system in the 2017 election for the Constituent Assembly said that turnout figures had been inflated by one million. Sound familiar? Better get those machines. I'm even reading that November 30th in Georgia, they're talking about wiping all of the machines from the election because they don't want them to get looked at. Who's ever heard anything like that before, especially when they're under investigation and they've got all the proof and the documents. We know that they're up to no good, and more and more we're starting to see how this is playing out. It's going to end up getting, um, I believe, where President Trump is going to win. And actually, Communist News Network video clip I'm going to show in a moment 
even proves it. So Bill Posey said, according to an affidavit in the Michigan lawsuit, one Michigan precinct township had 781.91% turnout. Nearly 800% turnout. How does this happen? Look at that. City of North Muskegon. I hope I said that right. Zeeland Charter Township had 460% turnout. How do you do that? Multiply, you know, people times seven times eight. Well, we're at seven, you know, speaking of multiplication, we're at 70, almost 78,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, guys. We're growing real quick. And we know .com is where you can find us, and that's where you can find even more our uh, stuff that you can order on the merchandise shop. You can also go to andweknow.tv and subscribe to that, so you can go on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV, just in case they take this channel down for sharing the truth. We know how things are going. So we are also on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Rumble, BitChute, and Parlor. That's where you can find the quick growth there if you're on patron um i've been taken down from patron so if you're giving there remember to remove your support for me there thank you so here we are with the uh, mastriano the senator and his interview on newsmax continued the legislatures are responsible for deciding how presidential electors are picked in their respective states because republicans control the house and senate in pennsylvania Senator Mastriano believes it can be done through a joint resolution to suspend state law that would not need a governor's signature. If he is successful, Biden would lose 20 Pennsylvania electors and President Trump would be awarded them. So what are the chances of this? We now know breaking news that the House and Senate are going to take this up. Please welcome to the program the courageous retired Army colonel and now state senator from Pennsylvania, the man leading the charge on behalf of the president and the people of his state. Please welcome Doug Mastriano to the program. Senator, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me on, Grant. Crazy day. I'm glad Jenna broke that news. So I'm excited we finally got the Senate resolution pushed out just moments ago. And uh, it's co-sponsored with some you know, heavy hitters in, in the Senate. Michelle Brooks, Mario Scavello, Dave Arnold, and also Judy Ward co-sponsored it. So we have momentum. The Constitution is on our side. For too long, the General Assembly, we act like we're not co-equals in this government, but we are. And it's time we exercise that ability, especially in light of the findings that we had in the hearings two days ago. All right. So, Senator, so you're saying the United, uh, excuse me, the Pennsylvania Senate pushed through this resolution. The House has to take up the same resolution, a similar one, then you match them. When will the House do that? So both the House and Senate introduced the legislation today, and there'll be a day or two where we're asking for the rest of the Republicans to sign on board. And then once enough get on, hopefully we could, we could roll with that Monday. So obviously, it, it, you rightly said it's time to contact your representatives and senators to get on board if they're not. Absolutely. Okay. So one of the problems now in Pennsylvania is this election has already been certified. We know this court appeals judge threw out the stay in that. So technically it's been certified. I guess the battle here will be taking back the certification, even though it's already been done. How do you square that here, Senator? So part of that is, is the Senate resolution, because we're, we're saying, look, Governor Wolf didn't look into any allegations and blew them off. Secretary of State Bookfar blew off all the allegations of shenanigans. Our attorney general, you know, declared a winner before one vote was counted. And so the whole process has been corrupted. No, nobody cares to see if there was shenanigans, cheating, fraud, you know, disenfranchisement. And so we're going to rise up and say, look, constitutionally, we had the final say on who the electors are. You certified an election that can't be certified because you didn't look into the allegations of cheating. So, you know, that was a turning point in Gettysburg Wednesday when, of course, for the first time to the world, the case was made from eyewitnesses, and it's so compelling and that anyone would stand aside, irregardless of party, and just, just get on board with party politics because they think their guy won is unacceptable. So we're going to reassert our authority here and uh, try to do the right thing here and correct that this entire disaster that's happened over this election cycle. Pretty interesting, right? So I believe, and uh, if you did not uh, watch the full uh, Gettysburg uh, second address of the world, right, um, that they had there, um, I Highly recommend that you go watch the entire thing, um, and you can understand what happened there. It was absolutely amazing, and uh, it seemed like Jenna Ellis was able to share with them some information that maybe the senator did not know or wasn't fully aware of, uh, because uh, one of the folks, wasn't him but in particular, but one of the, I believe it was one of the senators, spoke up and said that a lawyer had told her that there was nothing they can do, and uh, Jenna Ellis uh, brilliantly was able to share with them the Constitution sharing that they've got the power to pull it back. 
and pick the right electors for this. So what I found really interesting also when they were going through that was that the Communist News Network uh, actually did a piece. Kyle Becker put this out, and it was all over uh, Twitter. Um, They actually shared that the outcome uh, could actually go to President Trump. And this is from Fareed, a guy I never watched, couldn't stand watching him when I traveled on I changed the channel right away. But uh, anyway, very interesting to watch this, especially in light of uh, old Laura Ingram from Fox saying that there's no chance for President Trump. Legal and constitutional that could enable Trump to stay in office without actually winning the vote. The system of electing the president is complicated because it was not designed to be directly democratic. The Constitution calls for states to choose the presidential electors who in turn gather to vote for the president. Over time, states have passed laws that ensured their state's popular vote for the presidency would determine the electors. But those are laws, not a constitutional obligation. Now, imagine the scenario during election week. Trump is leading on November 3rd, but Joe Biden pulls ahead in the days following. Republicans file objections to tens of thousands of mail-in ballots. Democrats file countersuits. Taking account of the confusion, legislators decide to choose the electors themselves. Here's the worry. Of the nine swing states, eight have Republican legislatures. If one or more decide that balloting is chaotic and marred by irregularities, They could send what they regard as the legitimate slate of electors, which would be Republican. Democrats may object and file lawsuits. In some of those states, Democratic governors or secretaries of state could send their own slates of electors to Washington. That would add to the confusion, but that might well be part of the Republican plan. Because you see, when Congress convenes on January 6th to tally the electors' votes, there would be challenges to the legitimacy of some electors. It's possible congressional Republicans could decide that disputed states should simply not be counted. Suppose in this scenario, Michigan's votes are invalidated. That would ensure that neither candidate would get to 270 electoral votes. At that point, the Constitution clearly directs that the House of Representatives vote to determine the presidential election. But it does so with each state casting a single ballot. If the current numbers hold, there would be 26 state delegations that are Republican and 23 Democratic with one tied. So the outcome would be to re-elect Donald Trump. Trump doesn't need to do anything other than to simply accept this outcome, which is constitutional. Accept what outcome? Well, I don't, I don't like to just accept that outcome. Um, what he's trying to explain in, uh, in some small way, in my opinion, is that he is saying that President Trump didn't really win, didn't really get the votes that he needed to win those states. So the only way he can win is by basically, you know, playing a game as a Republican and just sneaking his way into the to the White House. That's the way it can be translated. Uh, I don't know what you guys think about that, but uh, it's just interesting to me that you've got somebody who I listened to for years claiming that there's no way for President Trump, and then you got this Communist News Network actually claiming that there is a way for President Trump, um, although it's still not the way that I think is the right way because the truth is that he did not lose. and it, So it's very interesting, right? So, um, the steal is on from Biden and has been caught. So speaking of stealing, the burglary crew believed to be responsible for nearly 100 burglaries has been busted. Police say that the three suspects who have already been arrested committed 40 burglaries in San Francisco and another 55 in the Bay Area. That's exactly why I have the night solar lights installed throughout my property. It's the best investment I've made in my peace of mind and my property all year. They are they don't have to have batteries, folks. The solar powered, it's amazing. Get your own set of night solar lights at nightsolarlight.com in that description box below. I highly recommend this. So the watermark ballots, remember those that we were talking about uh, in one of the videos before? A lot of folks were questioning whether that was true or not, the legitimacy of it. Uh, well, they were confirmed in Sidney Powell's lawsuit in Michigan. That's right. So uh, so anyway, they had the We Love Trump website said, okay, so that would be transparent watermarks. Am I reading that correctly? Folks, have I not told you all along to keep the faith? And that's from their article. So right there on page number 88, right there, it says another affiant 
testified about the use of different paper for ballots that would constitute fraud stating. I noticed that almost all the ballots, and this is on that, uh, this is from the affidavit. I noticed that almost all the ballots I reviewed were for Biden. Many batches went 100% for Biden batches. So that's like flipping a coin, say a thousand times. I'm just going to throw a thousand out there in all times that you flip that coin. It lands on heads a thousand times, 100%, right? That's impossible. Anyway, I also served at that. I also observed that the watermark, there it is, on at least three ballots were solid gray instead of transparent, leading me to believe the ballot was counterfeit. I challenged this and the elections director said it was a legitimate ballot and was due to the use of different printers. Many ballots had markings for Biden only and no markings on the rest of the ballot. Interesting, right? So if a bunch of fake ballots were printed up in order to steal the election, they would not have the watermark. This, quote, sting operation would serve to catch the cheaters with clear proof of massive fraud. The naysayers say, too good to be true and fake news. But even more interesting is if you look at the dress... Um, This is Melania Trump wearing a blockchain dress on Election Day. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. So there's the blockchain dress that she's wearing right there. And the blockchain seems to be uh, some type of computer uh, setup sending a message on Election Day that they have got a way of looking at and finding the fake ballots. Absolutely amazing, right? So David Bernie says, consider the Department of Homeland Security controlled official ballots production. The Dems print extras not knowing about non-radioactive isotope watermarks on official ballots. Military sting operation after weeding all counterfeit ballots, Trump landslide confirmed. And then uh, Bad Science said, I worked at the Georgia polls. Georgia uses this special paper with a couple of these features. I won't say which ones. If you voted in Georgia in person, you know how heavy the paper was, right? Yeah, special paper by this company. And so anyway, uh, more folks are putting out information about this. Joe M. said, so this is how America's enemies tried to steal the presidency. After watching the states that were steaming towards a Trump victory, the They turned off the counting, delivered the fraudulent Biden ballots, counted them, reported a sudden flip to Biden. Easy to track, easy to litigate, easy to expose. That's right. So here's another uh, bombshell, right, from Communist News Network um, from years ago. Report on Dominion Smartmatic software back when they had no vested interest to lie like they do now. Voting machine companies, the U.S. government did not review the sale. Many experts say those voting machines were manipulated in Venezuela to give President Hugo Chavez a victory. Exit polls done by the U.S. firm Penn, Schoen and Berland had Chavez losing 41 percent to 59 percent. But the next day, Chavez declared victory, reversing the score, saying he won 59 percent of the vote. Everything was computed in the favor of the government. So uh, the, the, the only explanation is that the Smartmatic machines had been programmed in that way. A Harvard mathematician crunched the numbers on the Venezuelan election. It had, had to be the Smartmatic system. All these machines talk to a central computer and report on their results. And that's something. So they, they put out a report from CNN years ago, and now they don't want to admit that that's what's going on. So uh, breaking news even more, a nonpartisan group releases disturbing findings in the Michigan election results. Quote, it would seem that the tabulating equipment in each precinct has been programmed to shift a percentage of absentee votes from Trump to Biden. So the ballots flagged in the report, right, were duplicated. Uh, duplicate voter ID, there was 8,341 of those. Duplicate ballot ID, 32. Missing ballot ID, 35,000. Missing ballot number, 36,000. Missing application sent date, 495,000. Missing ballot sent date, 36,000. Missing ballot return date, 217,000. Thousand and on and on it goes. So over 150 Michigan citizens, including GOP poll cha- uh, challengers and whistleblowers who worked as paid contractors for Dominion Voting Systems and the Wayne County Clerk's Office, have signed sworn affidavits attesting to voter fraud, voter irregularities and harassment, bullying and threats by election workers and Democrats at the TCF Center in Detroit, where hundreds of thousands of absentee ballots were processed.
<laughs> the report explains in detail the various red flags, such as 288,000 uh, ballots that have the application sent and ballot received on the same day. That's some quick delivery right there, folks, if you've ever, ever seen it absolutely strange what is going on all of these numbers coming in and i tell you what there is joe biden's magic covered by greg kelly uh, kelly president trump wanted us to watch this and see the magic that was performed by old biden himself there's some circumstantial weirdness to his alleged victory let's go through them number one 80 million votes that's more than any presidential candidate in the history of this country for Joe Biden. Now, on a lot of levels, it doesn't make sense. That is millions more votes than Barack Obama got in 2012. Barack Obama, he was beloved. Hold on. Barack Obama was beloved. And he only got, well, about 15 million less than he did in 2012. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Donald Trump gained 10 million votes than he did in 2016. And uh, you know, no incumbent has actually gained votes and lost re-election in about 100 years. That's pretty weird. That's very, very weird. That's very weird. So put the rest of it in the description box below. But uh, it's just amazing to see all of this information just pouring out from different sources, showing more and more that something strange is going on, and most of us know it by now. So General Flynn put this out. Why do we allow this in America with all we can produce and create and he's reacting to code monkey z who said quote dominion now the largest or second largest voting system company is foreign controlled and depends upon secret source code created and owned by smartmatic a foreign controlled company with ties to the venezuelan government led by hugo chavez good point general flynn we're going to hear from him in a moment but first from his family um i watched this entire interview on mac files so uh, if many of you know um uh, Christopher McDonald, we always say that he's a brother from another mother. We both grew up in Georgia, right down the road from each other, and found out uh, almost, I think it was last year, July 4th, is when we met uh, for the first time in D.C., met my family, and we had a great time talking. And every time we talk um, on the phone, I just feel like uh, we've been related, known each other our whole life. So I thought this was pretty important from the brother explaining what General Flynn is doing now. We just, we just sent it out about the hidden hand last night. And mm -hmm. uh, do you mind going into detail what that meant? Because I know there was yeah, a picture. I mean, Tell us about um, what you meant by that. Well, somebody put up there, you know, Sydney's throwing out in her in her uh, filing, she's throwing out that she's getting help from military intelligence. That's right. I'll, I'll say it straight up. I mean, basically since uh, probably... Beginning of last week, General Flynn has been with Sydney 24-7. And, and that's why he wasn't here. For, I had his wife and his son here for Thanksgiving. But uh, he's working with Sydney in an undisclosed location and a team of people to help her uh, do what she is going to do and what she's doing. And, um, he, you know, he's surrounding her with really good staff that is helping wow. her do all of her work. And, and um and I'm playing a little bit of a role, but not, of course, not as much as everyone else. But uh, that that is important. It's really important because he, you know, he he knows how to set up a an operation center, right? He knows how to organize a a a, 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 a battle. This is a battle. battle. So yeah, this. I mean, he told me he's. I feel like I'm deployed again. Yeah. You know? right. It's a little different circumstances. But. Yeah. I got you, buddy. I feel it. Which is exactly yeah. where he wants and needs to be. Oh, uh, he wouldn't want to be anywhere else. No. This is where he needs I mean, to and, be. And it's important that, Mary, you know, we're family. Mary and I are family. We grew up together. But we've got another family member, and that's Sydney. Yes. yes. Sydney, our family. And, 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 and the same thing, you know, media well, loves to attack Sydney, too. She's another oh. whipping boy yeah. of the left-wing media. That's right. So that's Joe uh, and Mary Flynn, brother and sister, and they're sharing something very interesting, showing that General Flynn is working with Sidney Powell in an undisclosed location. If there's anybody that can put a great team together, it is General Flynn. And I'm sure she is very excited to have that support. And so he did his first uh, interview on uh, WVW Broadcast. And I pulled a clip from this from the very beginning. General Flynn speaking to, I believe, all of us. 
and it was very, very good to hear his voice, especially after the uh, being pardoned for innocence. What's happening in this country should should never happen, and we are going through. There's no doubt in my mind, we're going through a a, uh, a, a crucible of history, and if we don't if we don't correct what it is that's happening right now over the next couple of weeks then then i i i really hate to even think about what will happen in our country going forward into the latter part of december and certainly into the into the next month i do not believe i do not believe for a second that the country will accept vice president biden as the next president based on what we know to be probably the greatest fraud that our country has ever experienced in our history. I mean, what we're seeing, what I, what I'm in right in the middle of it right now, and I will tell you that, first of all, the president has clear paths to victory. They have clear paths to victory, and they actually don't require a lot of a lot of courtroom action. What they require is they they require a lot of honesty out of uh, elected officials and frankly a lot of Americans who who are coming forward and telling us their stories i mean the hundreds and hundreds of Americans around the country in different states not just the swing states but but many many other states that are coming forward with their stories and putting them down on affidavits as witnesses we had we had probably 10 or 12 uh, affidavits come in from a from one particular state today, and because there's been a number of threats to people, these in, these particular uh, patriots they sent their photos in with their affidavits and said, "Put mine up on the at the top of the list because I want people to know that I'm not going to be afraid of these people that are that are threatening our country and our way of life." And so, I I say all that, and uh, you know, on one hand, and the other hand. Uh, as I just uh, described, we have clear, clear paths to victory for this president. And frankly, he's going to win Pennsylvania. He's going to win Arizona. He's going to win uh, Georgia. He's going to win Nevada. He's going to win uh, Michigan. And the other, the other one that he's probably going to pull in is Wisconsin too, because there, there's a uh, there's a discrepancy in Wisconsin of 130 thousand fraudulent ballots that they just found they just discovered so there's a lot of things happening and uh and it's all to me it's all positive i was asked today on a scale of one to ten who will be the next president and i said ten it'll be donald trump it'll be president trump there's no doubt in my mind there's no doubt in my mind that he won this election hands down in a landslide probably somewhere between 350 and 400 uh, uh electoral college votes did you hear that? 400 electoral college votes. He sees what's going on. He's now part of the fight. We're loving it. We need to keep them in prayer every single day as many times as possible. Lynn Wood said uh, from Josh Shapiro, who put, we just n- uh, notched another win for democracy. The PA Supreme Court has dismissed the suit that was attempting to throw out the votes of 2.5 million Pennsylvanians and halt certification so Josh Shapiro is trying to celebrate that they're trying to beat uh, President Trump down. Well, Lynn Wood said another win for fraud is the truth. Did Josh Shapiro, PA, get a degree from the same school of political hacks apparently attended by Brian Kemp of Georgia and Georgia Secretary of State? These political hacks never took course on we the people. It is time for them to be educated on who pays their salaries. That's exactly right. And so this is what... Uh, Jenna Ellis had to say on Newsmax as we come close to the end of this video. We're all in the hunt for evidence. One of my concerns is this is a civil case. It's not like you are the FBI and can issue a search warrant and go in and start searching for evidence. How is that quest going for evidence? I know you got plenty of sworn affidavits, but how's that battle going to collect more of it? Yeah, well, of course, you know, we're getting reports from people daily. And, you know, let's remember that this is all about election official fraud. This is about ignoring the state legislature's rules for the manner in which this election was supposed to have occurred. And so we have governors that ignored the rules. We have secretaries of state that ignored the rules. We have election officials on the ground that ignored the rules in all of these six states. And so the sworn affidavits 
the uh, evidence that we have, that is more than enough. We don't actually need a court order for anything else. Now, we're still, of course, pursuing all of that, but that would just be the icing on the cake. We already have right. substantial well. evidence to prove that there was fraud sufficient to undermine the results of this election, and that's what we want to prevent. We've done this on a very short time frame, and I'm very proud of all of the efforts of the Trump legal team, well. as well as the courage of these state legislators. Well, we appreciate you for having the courage to stand up for this. I, I know there's a lot of people trying to take clients away from lawyers working on this case. There's all kinds of death threats going on out there. So um, it takes guts. We appreciate you standing up for America. Jen Ellis, give the whole team a thumbs up for us. Uh, Godspeed as you move through this process. And thanks for coming on and breaking some news for us tonight. Absolutely. We're it's amazing. She evidence. is doing uh, great work. And, uh, and we're loving it also. The Patriots are still out there fighting. We had this uh, Lynn Wood post these videos. Uh, one was uh, the first one is the cars honking, um, visiting Bryant Kemp, Georgia, at the governor's mansion. Pretty cool. So they're driving right along, and everybody's making U turns. And heading back the other way and honking and honking and honking. Outstanding. And then the other one, uh, Georgia Patriots paying a visit to the Georgia Secretary of State in Atlanta, Brad Raffensperger. Listen to those horns going crazy. You can see them. They're asking for directions. Everybody's doing U-turns. They're turning back around. And you get to see the line of cars, and they've got those flags waving, and they're supporting our president and letting him know they do not appreciate what they're doing, and they have caught them in their lie and in their stealing of not only the election, but of money, their attempt to steal anyway. So Lynn Wood had this to say, As we age, we gain knowledge. With longevity and life experiences, you gain wisdom. Some gain discernment. Is next step enlightenment for some, but for me, the next step was surrender. Surrender to God. God lights up old glory even when it's dark out. Trust Him. All will be well. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now once again, and we thank you for the many victories that we've seen the past few weeks. Uh, we do think about and lift up to you Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, General Flynn, his family, the President of the United States, his family, all of those working behind the scenes, the lawyers, the teams, the Seculo, everyone that's out there fighting for this election. We know that if we do not pull this one out, we know that it's the end of a country. We know that if our country goes down, the rest of the world goes down with it. Father, you know this just as well as we do. We know that this is in your hands. We come to you together as one entire voice begging you for mercy and for grace on our lives, that you would make this a lot faster than what we've been told, to expose the enemy, to destroy this fraud that's going on, and to renew faith in the election process and make it true once again. May the entire earth wake up. May they all come to freedom in all of this. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share. Sharing gets around all of the algorithms set up to destroy this channel. We thank you for the comments below. They're amazing. They're touching. And we uh, just love them and adore them. And we actually uh, appreciate all of the purchasing at our store. Also, it's such a big support. And for the PayPal donations, thank you. For now, this is LT with And We Know, signing out.